Coming up on Tech News Today, why charity is better than jobs. That's a pun. Also, the data wars begin. It's Google versus Facebook, an epic titanic battle. And you can get free broadcast TV on the web, streaming live right now. Hurry before it's taken down by the law. Coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, November 5th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. And by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on ideas, go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we kick around the tech news of the day along with Randall Bennett. Hey, hey Randall. Guys. How are you? Welcome back. Thanks for Thanks. Uh, coming being on the show again this Friday. It's good to be back. I'm excited. How long has it been, Randall? We were trying to think. Uh, a couple, couple months. months. Yeah. yeah, a couple months. Good to see you again. Very yeah, good likewise. To, very good to see you. Um, I'm sorry you didn't make Forbes' list of the most powerful people in the world. I'm sure you expected to. I think that was like 101, to. 102. So. Yeah. He narrowly missed it. Forbes yeah. was very uh, circumspect, very conservative, very humble in how they presented this list. They said there are 6.8 billion people on the planet. Here are the 68 who matter. <laughs> 68. 68 Just people a, who matter. Okay. Uh, number one, Hu Jintao, that tech mogul. Uh, Hu Jintao of China, China's president. President of China. Um, the top tech person was Bill Gates. Uh, yeah, and the number two. And number two on the entire list. Yeah. Right. So that's now you'd say Bill Gates isn't Microsoft in a decline, but it's uh, not really about Microsoft, no, is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's about the charity. It's about it's the funny. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yeah, right. Because it's, a it's huge funny how one. things just really flip. You know, you think about Bill Gates a couple years ago. He was this monopolist who everyone hated. Now he's on 60 Minutes getting props for, you know, all the work in Africa he's doing, all these different things. And Forbes obviously thinks he's changing the world. So, Steve Jobs is at number 17, appearing to be the insanely creative Apple co-founder. 17. Insanely creative. Yeah. He's kind of crazy. There You're are right about that. A lot more important people than Steve Jobs, according to Forbes. Well, right. There's the Pope and Angela <laughs> oh, Merkel and Barack yeah. Obama, Vladimir yeah. Putin. Again, the 6.8 billion. <laughs> Abdullah bin Girl. Abdulaziz Al Saud. Of course. Easy for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, also on the list, uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, but they had to share number 22. I guess if one they're of them probably, dies, they're probably so sick and tired of being considered powerful. just one person yeah. at this point. Uh, yeah. Of course, of Google, if you, if you don't <laughs> right. recognize their name. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, uh, 40th most powerful person in the world. Well, he's young. He's, so got, when, he's got room to grow. He's got time. When yeah. he says the iPad is not mobile, it's not. He's the 40th most powerful person in the world. He gets to say that. What happens if Hu Jintao says it's mobile? What happens if they... I like, think if Hu Jintao contest, wins. That's true, because Steve Jobs win? is number 17, so he can say, no, it's not Mark. I'm 17. Exactly. Take yeah. that. <laughs> it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, you know? Like, he's got more hit points being at 17 on the Forbes. Zuckerberg list. is almost the president of as many people as the Chinese president <laughs> is of China. Think yeah. Of terms. Interesting. That's, well, and think about Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Right. How many people are they president of? I think it's really silly that they're on one. Yeah, they're sharing the load, though. Yeah. They're, they're like president <laughs> of a lot, but they, you know, they yeah. each take half. It's so like Holland Not as much. Yeah. <laughs> right. Totally like Holland One without Oates. the other, not yeah. influential at all. <laughs> uh, and rounding out the list, Julian Assange, the very last place, number 68 uh, of Wiki WikiLeaks fame, uh, and because he is a genius provocateur. I so. would agree. So lots of tech folks are running the world. You'll be happy to know. Uh, there is a data war brewing between the countries of Google and Facebook. The presidents, Larry Page and Sergey Brin and Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> are all facing off over data reciprocity. Uh, Google changed the terms of service of their Google Contact API in a way that says, if you access someone's account in order to read their address book, you also 
have to make any contact information you store in your service exportable. Right, which Facebook does not do. Right. Right now, Facebook says you can export the names of your friends, but you can't export their email address, their address, all that stuff, because that's considered private data. Google says, well, that's not fair. If you can go and suck all the Gmail contact information and all the email addresses out of there, why can't someone take the email addresses of their friends from Facebook and take them over into Gmail? So what happens think- is now is if I open a Facebook account, and I want to link it uh, and, you know, figure out who, who my friends are. Now I don't have the option to import all my Gmail contacts. Right. You do have the option to import Yahoo Mail and Hotmail, Hotmail. contacts because there are agreements between Facebook and those. Well, I don't have any of those. I so, mean, really, this is just a business move, right? Like uh, Yahoo and Microsoft both have made deals with Facebook. Obviously, Google and Facebook are fighting now. Um, I mean, it's really, Michael Arrington put it right, that this is the beginning of some sort of protectionist data war where... Uh, Facebook and Google are going to become less friendly with each other for sure. I mean, I I have to side with Google on this. Um, I think they're they're completely within their rights to say, hey, you know, if you don't let us, we won't let you. But at the same time, it's not um, it's not surprising to me that Facebook would be like, well, no, we're not going to allow you to do that because we want you to stay at Facebook. I mean, that's typical Facebook too. Yeah, well, Facebook yeah. saying it's it, right. But Facebook it's, saying it's a privacy thing. Everyone's you know turned their nose up in the air and laughing at them like, oh, like like suddenly you care about <laughs> You're privacy. You're so concerned with privacy. But now. I actually think this makes sense because what they're looking at is someone saying to Facebook, oh. Now you let my address and phone number go out because Sarah mm-hmm. says it's okay. That's not okay. Sarah that is wants exactly to leave Facebook. the kind of thing they've gotten in trouble for in the past. And so they're overly sensitive now and they're saying, look, if Sarah says I'm going to share my phone number with Tom, that's fine on Facebook. But that doesn't give Sarah the right to, or that doesn't give Tom the right to take Sarah's contact information over to Google. Right, because I shared it with you yeah. within the confines of Facebook, thinking that it was just between the two of us. It's a little bit different controls. of an experience. So I think both sides have points here. Google mm-hmm. has a point to say, well, wait a minute, you can suck up somebody's contact information from us, but we can't do it from you. That doesn't work. We're going to try to do some kind of open source thing here and say, well, if you want to modify the source code, you have to share your modifications. If you want to take contact information, you have to share your contact information. And Facebook is saying, ah, we're not comfortable with that. Our, audi- our audience doesn't like it when we do stuff like that. But this. the weird thing is they signed deals with Hotmail and Yahoo, though, right? And they actually are giving them, according to TechCrunch anyway, they're giving them access to contact data as well. So I think while there's some of the concerns are definitely... Uh, warranted, especially with uh, Facebook's history, I still think that this is more of a business thing than anything. Yeah, exactly. If you can, if you can come to an agreement with Yahoo that says, okay, you can now take someone's contact information without their explicit pr- approval because we have a business deal with you. Exactly. Uh, it does it does shed some doubt on the purity of the privacy motivation there. But but I think that's where this is all going. Is Google and Facebook probably do want to have some kind of deal, and then it takes some brinksmanship to force them to talk. I guess. Yeah, I mean, they're really, I, I, if in the Valley, it kind of seems like people are taking sides. It seems like Google and Twitter are kind of on one side. Facebook, Microsoft, and Yahoo are sort of on another side. And Apple, mean, in the meantime, makes friends with whoever is convenient for the next 10 minutes. So there's, I mean, it's a lot of business maneuvering going on. Speaking of business maneuvering, uh, Dell thinks it's going to cut its, its costs by 25%. When they force their entire employeeship to dump their Blackberries for the Dell Review Windows Phone 7 handset. That's 25,000 employees, too, so they're probably going to save a lot of money. Well, the way they think they're going to save the money is they won't have to run the BlackBerry Enterprise server anymore. Although, doesn't BlackBerry offer, a, if, if, if people are just using it to access email, for the most part, don't they offer a free version? Yeah, Dell could switch to that, I guess. Yeah, so I guess lose, they have they enough employees that, that need more than that. Yeah, exactly. The exchange server is really the piece that costs the most money. And they would lose access to being able to share contacts and the great calendar integration. It would be just more mediocre calendar integration. Also, when the Dell rep is coming in to sell you the Dell review at CES in your little back, back room meeting and he pulls out his BlackBerry, they're going to be like, yeah. so why don't you yeah. carry a Dell review? Right. Is it yeah, because it's true. too huge? So this avoids that. If all the Dell employees have the review, then nobody says like, <laughs> oh, you have one. Yeah, look, it's yeah. right here. This is how it looks like this is talking from. So. Yeah, it, only, it's, it only fits kind of in your back pocket. It's like a Chicago area burrito. Big as your head. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, uh, let's take a moment and uh, thank our sponsors, Ford, makers of Ford and Voice Activated Sync. A uh, problem for a lot of folks these days when they're driving is keeping their eyes on the road. And if you're driving a Ford with Voice Activated Sync, your temptations are limited because a lot of things you might want to do to take your eyes off the road don't take your eyes off the road anymore because you just talk, you speak, and you can send text messages, you can listen to text messages, you can make phone calls, you can receive phone calls, you can flip through your playlist, you can skip songs, you can change from listening to music to listening to audiobooks, all while keeping your eye on that little old lady going 45 miles an hour in front of you so you don't run into her rear end and you can drive more safely. Check it out at a Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer near you. It comes with turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, and more. If your airbags go off after you do rear-end someone accidentally, automatically calls 911. Uh, it's a great way to keep yourself safe on the road. Music and podcast search, personalized traffic alerts, even reroutes you with turn-by-turn -turn directions. If the traffic alert says, hey, you know what? The Bay Bridge is all backed up, and you're like, but I'm, I'm in Chicago. How is the Bay Bridge backed up? It doesn't matter. They'll give you a new route to get you where you're going. Check it out at SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Sync is standard on some Ford, Mer Lincoln, and Mercury models and optional on others. Okay, so we talked yesterday briefly about uh, the idea that the Connect might have a hard time seeing people with dark skin. Uh, this was based on a GameSpot report. Consumer Reports has gone through some testing and says... Our testing suggests facial recognition features of the Connect might not work properly. Uh, or I'm sorry, I'm reading the GameSpot thing. Consumer Reports did not encounter this in issue unless there was low light. They said they couldn't find anything that had anything to do with people's skin color, but they found that there were more problems with the Connect in dark rooms. If you had plenty of light, you were fine. Yeah, this, I mean, this just makes a lot more sense light. than the Connect <laughs> being some sort of a racist device. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't think anybody. Re I mean, there were Actually a few headline. That they, yeah, yeah, there are a few headline writers took advantage of throwing that term around. I don't think anybody thought this was on purpose. Sure. Uh, uh, but I think some people thought it might be an unfortunate side effect of the way the Connect worked. And essentially, uh, Consumer Reports found the Connect recognized both players at light levels typically used in living rooms at night and failed to recognize both players white or black, uh, when the lights were turned down lower. So they did not experience any instance where one player was recognized and the other wasn't under the same lighting conditions. So you can't dance in the dark. Yeah. I mean, that's like the only way of, I like yeah, it. Yeah, video games are in, more enjoyable in the dark, a little bit but more immersive the, that way. So only for the login, though, right? The actual login screen, they'll recognize you as a user. That's right. what this affects mostly, not yeah. the actual gameplay. You so. can turn down the lights after you've logged in. Good. Yeah. And play some Billy Idol. When and the you'll lights be fine. go down, yeah. we'll be dancing in the dark. Yeah, you do exactly. your journey and then you're Billy Idol and then you're on your way. Or Billy Gaga. I fix it. Uh, the DIY repair site that loves to tear things apart uh, has taken their tools to the Connect and they found out uh, it is packed a lot into that little small little box. The said the device boasts so many built in sensors that only Pleo, the dinosaur robot, comes close to matching it. Uh, they said it's a very mechanically complex device, clearly designed by a team accustomed to designing large hardware like the S Xbox. Uh, they found four microphones, two infrared cameras for depth detection, and one standard visual spectrum camera used for visual recognition. That would be the one that was having the problem with the low light. A motor and three-axis accelerometer to increase the accuracy of the panning motor. Uh, the uh, oh, But it uh, was the Connect Prime Sense PS1080A2 that makes the device work. That's the operating system. So some good stuff. Check out iFixit if you want to find more about what's actually inside the Connect. A federal judge has ruled that subscriber data captured from cell phone towers is protected by the Fourth Amendment's provision against illegal search and seizure. Amen. Exactly. Well, that, that, we want to separate church and state. Okay. That's another. <laughs> that's a t totally right, different Tom. amendment. Uh, the decision <laughs> is part of a sea change <laughs> from a half decade worth of previous rulings that sort of leaned in favor of law enforcement to be able to just grab uh, this data. Uh, but U.S. Magistrate Judge Stephen William Smith of the Southern District of Texas said recent changes in case law and rapidly evolving mobile technology require a departure from the outcomes. And he pointed out, hey, in 1789... You didn't really have the ability to track everybody's step 
everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote in his decision, for a cell phone user born in 1984, it is conceivable that every movement of his adult life can be imperceptibly captured, compiled, and retrieved from a digital dossier somewhere in a computer cloud. Now, as then, the Fourth Amendment remains our poll star. Uh, so he's, he's basically saying, look, we have to reinterpret the Fourth Amendment to apply to a world in which they can follow you into your house while never being there. And yeah, that's tracking your phone. Pieces, there's a lot of sort of conflicts that are coming up with this as well. I mean, there's, uh, you know, they've talked sort of about how uh, f providers like Facebook and Google and all these different companies need to be subject to wiretap laws so that if someone uses Skype to call or Gchat or anything, that they can still be able to wiretap. I think it's kind of refreshing that. Uh, at least someone's looking out for the Fourth Amendment and saying, back in the 1700s, you just had to be a good detective. You didn't have the ability to actually listen on, in on someone's conversation as it's happening or, you know, without a warrant or anything like that. So, Of course, doesn't this make uh, law enforcement more difficult? If I, you know, if, if I'm a criminal now, I know that I can, with impunity, carry my cell phone around because they can't get at me as easily. Get a warrant. You know, if someone's doing something wrong, get a warrant. It's protected by the Fourth Amendment. That doesn't mean they can't get it, is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. If they, if they have a warrant, they, I mean, the Fourth Amendment protects unreasonable search and seizures. But a reasonable a search and seizure can still work. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if there's probable cause, if there's a problem, if you know, you're expected to be doing something wrong and you can prove that to a judge, they still can get all this data just fine. So I think this is, it's really refreshing that we're making sure that our rights are protected. I mean, that was the whole issue with the alleged drug dealer. They didn't have a warrant beforehand. Right. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, if they had, maybe they would have found some stuff. Well, if you've watched The Wire, you know how difficult it is <laughs> to get a warrant sometimes. Yeah. And you it just me? makes the cops want to start, you know, freaking Hamsterdam. Yeah. 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 Anyway. I haven't seen it. I, uh, I should point out that I, <laughs> I, I mistakenly said there. Billy Idol uh, earlier when I met Bruce Springsteen. Of course. It's okay. I corrected you under my breath. Uh, the dance, it wasn't Dancing in the Dark the one where he pull, pulls Courtney Cox up on stage? That's right. Yeah. And Billy yes. Idol was dancing with myself. Which That's you can also do on the Connect. And in the dark. And in the dark, yeah, exactly. It's perfect. That's the confusion. Bruce Idol. I'm sure there's a mashup somewhere out there. Somewhere. If there isn't, there is now. Maybe there will better be. be. <laughs> Canonical, the proprietors of the Ubuntu Linux operating system, uh, founder Mark Shuttleworth, has announced that Ubuntu is going to move away from the X.org display environment in favor of Wayland, a more modern alternative. Uh, if you don't know much about Linux, this is huge news because X yeah. windowing is the basis for what gives you a graphical user interface in Linux. I think it's it's funny that we, you know, we think of open source as a progressive thing, but a lot of times core technologies are sort of off limits. It's not, you know, you don't want to be out versioning someone every two months. And that's why a lot of these open source projects start fragmenting and there's all these different pieces. Now that Ubuntu is sort of is seen as someone who is of note, it's interesting that they can kind of push the agenda. Some, you know, Apple would be someone who does this with things uh, like Firewire or eliminating floppy drives or now with the MacBook Air eliminating DVD drives. Maybe Ubuntu can sort of fill that role in the Linux community and, you know, try to make us all a little bit better. I don't yeah. Know. Oh, they are becoming the tastemakers. And, and in a way, Shuttleworth is, is Linux's jobs. Uh, he says we'll be able to retain the ability to run X applications in compatibility mode. Uh, this is a, not a transition that needs to reset the world of free software. Uh, the best interface uh, for the desktop is Unity with all its GL dependencies, but will help GNOME and KDE with the transition. There's no reason for them not to be there on day one. We can all be in this together. Yeah, I, I'm I, one of my biggest problems with Linux has always been sort of the, the graphical environment is lackluster. And as a digital content creator, you know, I end up doing a lot of things on the Mac because things like Quartz and all the underpinnings of Mac OS X that are just built, or Mac OS 10, sorry, nerds, um, that are <laughs> built, you know, properly. Linux just doesn't have that, and no one. It's just because no one's gotten around to building it yet. So anything to sort of push, uh, you know, G, having your know, GL dependencies in your window manager, as nerdy as that sounds, uh, that's. I mean, that's a. It's a good step forward. Yeah, uh, Canonical has been very instrumental in trying to make Linux friendly on the desktop, which a lot of people think is just never going to happen. But if it is going to happen, it looks like these guys are the ones to make it happen. Uh, finally, you can watch free live broadcast TV on your iPad right now. That sounds great, Tom. Thanks to filmon.com. You can watch all the LA stations. I was watching Michaela Pereira on KTLA hey. this morning. LA stations hey, are TV. actually fun because there's so much celebrity gossip that's just top news. 
Yeah. Because that's, uh, that's what local David. news is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole different breed. They have created a version of their site that doesn't require you to download anything. If you go on your or your laptop, you can look at filmon.com, but it requires you to download and install some plugins. Right. If you go on your iPad, though, it just starts playing. And you can look at CBS and NBC and ABC. No, this is all free? Yeah, free, streaming live right over the internet. Wow, Sounds what's, legit. what's the catch? <laughs> there is no catch for you. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> you you're not the one Sounds who will great. get sued here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the networks are already after Filmon, and there's another company. Uh, what is it? Ivy TV, IVI, uh, yeah. uh, IVI say, uh, up in, up in that. Seattle, uh, that are doing this. They're trying to use the secondary transmission rules of the FCC to say, hey, it's just we're taking over the air broadcasts and, and passing them along. But they're passing along broadcasts that uh, we, not being in the LA area, would not be able to see otherwise. So is that part of the loophole? That's where the retransmission stuff gets really confusing. I mean, I think these people would contend that the way it's written today, it doesn't um, associate this specific defined geographical area as part of it. I think that most people would agree, though, that the spirit of the law is more, uh, if you can receive it over the air, you should be able to receive it over cable. And that's why they would have to pay that statute. There's like a specific retransmission fee that they normally pay. Or the cable companies can opt to pay instead of negotiating with each content provider. So that, I mean, I don't, it's, is it legal? It might be, maybe, potentially, possibly. But if this were to ever go all the way to court, uh, I, I think the FCC would probably rule in the broadcaster's favor. So. Yeah, you, the the rules are set to allow you, if you're in a hotel or a hospital, uh, to rebroadcast a signal across a, a large building in order to make sure that all of your televisions are, are getting a good signal, right? You can run some yeah. wires and, and take an antenna broadcast and, and rebroadcast it to 30 or 40. You're not taking anything you know, from the internet. This is a signal yeah. you're getting on yeah, your roof Yeah, exactly. Somewhere. It's meant to take the over-the-air yeah. broadcast and, and make sure in a limited area mm-hmm. uh, that it can be seen well. That It doesn't apply to this, but these guys are trying to say, well, we're not rebroadcasting it over the air. And we're not sending it over cable, <laughs> They're also, even though the internet runs with cables. They're not the first ones to do this either. Like, what makes them think that they could get away with it when there have been other sites doing this very same thing that I would imagine have been shut down? I mean, they can't well, be the first ones to rebroadcast TV onto the internet. Oh, sure. no, there was a the Canadian company the, doing this a long time ago. In, like, the yeah, dot-com it. bubble, there was a couple companies who tried to do this, and they tried to argue the exact same thing. They were just... Uh, you know, the bubble crashed. They were kind of already on sketchy legal ground. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the money to pay the lawyers. They just said, we're done. So, I yeah, mean, right. it's definitely not the first, but it's never really made it to that full They've never le- totally uh, challenged So it. if everyone exactly. is aware that secondary transmission isn't a very good argument, then what is the point? Well, they're not... Sh- See, that's the thing, though. These people might not be convinced. I mean, th- there's other arguments as well. Um, I, I tend to think that they're that they're they're doing this for the right reasons. They're trying to challenge the law, but you know, there's there's definitely some other ones. Tom, I think you had a well, a g- good guess. I don't know for sure, but when I went to film on, I, I just couldn't help but notice there are a couple porn channels there mm. on the left mm. side, uh, and I could see a business model where you flaunt the law and get a lot of press and have a lot of people coming to your site because they want to watch CNN or NBC or ABC or CBS. It's ma- the wide and mainstream. Discovering yeah. <laughs> these other channels and then starting to come back. And then when you lose your court case and you give up and you you know settle out of court and you don't rebroadcast the networks, you keep some of those other channels, maybe add a few more and start a, a pay service for porn. And then down the road, some, someone somewhere says, film on, what? Oh yeah. yeah, let's give that a try. <laughs> I'm just household saying it. name. I'm not saying that's what Filmon is doing. If they could, but I'm saying that could be what somebody did. It could be a bit yeah. of a branding strategy. Yeah, what they're yeah. really after. I it don't know. Be. Yeah, I wonder how this affects Slingbox because you're broadcasting uh, your own channels back to yourself. It's one of those things where the, the rights holders they get up in arms about things like this. For instance. Uh, there's a big row in the music industry, I want to say six months ago, when people found out that through MobileMe, you could technically stream your music from your MobileMe account right. to your phone. And the rights holders say, whoa, this is, th- Apple doesn't have a license to stream. They only have a license to sell on iTunes. And yeah. realistically, like, there's a different use case here. I think Slingbox would be in that same camp. And if people were to freak out about Slingbox or freak out about the personal streaming of music, I think there would be a new rights structure created where 
that would probably be exempted. I mean, the Copyright op Office, believe it or not, they do look at these things every five to six years, the yeah. Royalties Arbitration Board. So it, if if it were ever to get to that point, we, I think Slingbox would still be okay. Every once in a while, bones get thrown. Exactly. They might throw one at Slingbox. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a, uh, another break and thank our other sponsor, GE, the makers of the $200 million Ecomagination Challenge. This is a really cool contest. If you're an entrepreneur or you're someone who thinks about business, you're a student, uh, you're just an innovator, uh, they've got $200 million to invest in great ideas for improving the way energy is produced, transferred, and consumed. And that is something that whether you uh, are concerned about the environment or not, you're probably concerned about your power bill. And this could help that too. GE is making investments in three energy categories. The first is renewables, uh, better ways to integrate renewable energy into our power grid. That comes from wind, water, or sun. Uh, ways to make cheaper energy that we don't have to worry about that we're going to run out of one of these days. GE's second investment category is grid efficiency. They want to convert the smart grid to digital energy to improve transparency at every step of the grid, reduce waste, and give more choices to consumers and energy service providers. And the third investment category is eco-homes. Uh, GE says that energy consumption is growing so quickly it's creating an imbalance between demand and supply. So GE wants to help change how and when we use energy and lower energy costs. So if you've got an idea that fits in one of these categories, they've got $200 million. They just are sitting there, you know, burning a hole in their desk. They want to hand it out to people to learn more and read the ideas and comment on them. Go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. Even if you don't have an idea, you can actually participate by looking at other ideas and saying, hey, I like that one. That one sounds like it would work. Uh, that's ecomagination.com slash challenge. We thank GE for supporting Tech News Today and our other show, Green Tech Today. Be sure to listen or watch Green Tech Today in iTunes or at twit.tv. It's time for the News Fuse. <laughs> The FCC lost all their congressional allies in the fight for net neutrality after Tuesday's midterm elections. None. This is almost a statistical impossibility. None of the nearly 100 Democratic candidates who signed a pledge to support the FCC's net neutrality policy won their race. The FCC, FCC can still take action on its own, uh, but its options are much fewer without legislative help. Yeah, like slim to none. A site called Lame Book, Lame Book, Lame Book, that mocks Facebook content has been threatened with a trademark infringement lawsuit by Facebook. So it decided to sue Facebook first. Lame Book claims it's a parody and therefore protected by the First Amendment. Lame Book's part of the same network sites as Regretsy, which is a blog dedicated <laughs> to the nice. most tasteless and weird items for sale on craft marketplace Etsy. It's a great site. They said, you're going to sue us, Facebook? That's lame. We're, you're so lame book. You're lame book. Lame book. We're suing you. Speaking, speaking of lame, lame book, book does it. <laughs> North Koreans are aglow after their second PDA has been released, which includes maps of the country and dictionaries for translating Russian, English, Chinese, and German. The device has no wireless capability or GPS to make the maps more interactive. Connectivity is instead over USB. Though the unnamed device also has a micro SD card slot, which means you can expand it. At 140 bucks, though, an average North Korean would have to save five months of pay to snag one. Hey, lame I, book. I make a dollar that a day. So lame book. It only lame take book. me 140 days. Exactly. The United States Cyber Command has achieved full <laughs> operational capability, which means it has what it needs and knows how to use it. Part of Cyber <laughs> Command's mission is to operate and defend our networks effectively. Another possible unintentional side effect is to get people to think how cool it would be to work at some place called Cyber Command that has an eagle and a lightning bolt in its logo. Yeah. Cyber Command. Bloomberg reports Bank of America Corp. and Citigroup Inc. are considering whether or not to let employees use the iPhone as an alternative to BlackBerry for corporate email, according to three, count them, three anonymous sources familiar with the plans. The banks are testing software for the iPhone that's designed to make it secure enough for company messages. Speaking of iPhone, a number of wireless banking applications for both the iPhone and Android uh, contain some security and privacy flaws that cause the phones to store sensitive information in clear text, which then could be gained Ooh. by hackers, according That's to a report. 
from Ars Technica. The applications were distributed by financial institutions like Wells Fargo and Bank of America. At least one Android application distributed by Wells Fargo stored an account holder's username and password on the phone in clear text. The application also stored account balances on the phone as well, according to a security researcher who spoke to the Wall Street Journal. I've never w thought I needed to keep those apps on my phone. I can just use the website. Plus, using banking on the mobile phone always just seems like risky to me. So there you go. Yeah, WikiLeaks most prominent member and campaigner for transparency, Julian Assange, who we learned earlier is the 68th most powerful person in the world. Congrats, Julian. Uh, Julian told a Swiss TV program he is considering seeking asylum in Switzerland. Assange fears being extradited to the U.S. on espionage charges following WikiLeaks' recent disclosure of tens of thousands of classified frontline reports from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Physicists at the University of St. Andrews have created a metamaterial that works in the optical range, the scientists note in the new journal of physics. Andrea DeFalco and his research partners put together a metamaterial that could bend visible light and build it in a way that could lead to larger scale manufacturing and real world applications, none of which I can think of. Um, the Harry invisibility Potter, cloak? Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Also, uh, tricking people into thinking there are empty parking spaces by putting one over your car. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, snap. Crasher. Oh, there's awesome. lots of real good okay, all right. applications. Two very good ones. Invisibility cloak and... 95% of them involve some the sort of practical spaces. joke, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, have you guys heard about Cook Source? No. Yes. Okay. Well, you've got to hear about it. Cook Source is a, uh, a magazine... Apparently in the Pacific Northwest, mostly, it's it's given out uh, at grocery stores. I don't know if it's sold or if it's free or, or what the deal is with it. Um, I, I guess it's free. Dozens of stores in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. Oh, not the Pacific Northwest, the Atlantic Northeast. Why don't we call it the Atlantic Northeast? I'm going to start doing that. Uh, in the Atlantic Northeast, Cook Source Magazine is given away free. Anyway, uh, they recently published a an article about good cookery. A Tale of Two Tarts, A Brief History of 14th Century Thinking on the Use of Apples. Uh, it was written by Monica Gaudio, uh, much to the surprise of Monica Gaudio, who says in her blog she found out when a friend called her, congratulated her on publication, and she said, what are you talking about? That was a blog post. I never sold it to anyone. Uh, so that, that begins the problem. Cook Source Magazine's editor, uh, Judith Griggs, apparently responded by saying, oops, my bad. Uh, long session, tired eyes when I was plagiarizing your entire article. And, uh, <laughs> Copy and paste, well, and then sorry. I just forgot. And then said, but honestly, Monica, the web is considered public domain, and you should be happy we just didn't lift your whole article and put someone else's name on it. <laughs> yeah. Good response. Classy. Yes. Way so, to squelch the issue right there. Yeah, think. exactly. Um, <laughs> so, of course, in uh, grand style, the Internet has been hammering the Cook's Source website and Facebook page. There are many fake Cook's Source pages up on Facebook now saying outlandish things. Uh, TechDirt reports there is a real response from Judith Griggs. Uh, we're not 100% we're not sure if this is real, but they got it off of the original Facebook account and it says hi folks here i am with egg on my face i did apologize to monica via email but apparently it wasn't enough for her to all of you thank you for your interest in cook source and again to monica i am sorry my bad you did find a way to get your pound of flesh we used to have 110 friends we now have 1870 wow, wow. best to all judith what is up with judith Judith is. Hi, I'm Judith. I hate everyone but myself. Yeah, Judith is unaware of how the internet works. Yeah, of, uh, or copyright law, or, or copyright law. Apparently, or just kind of reality. What yeah. blogging engine was uh, Monica <laughs> using out of curiosity? Now, in in fairness, we don't know a hundred percent that any of these things are coming from Judith. All we have is uh, Monica's word that this email was sent. Right. Right. So Judith hasn't confirmed that, except for this tech dirt comment which we can't confirm actually came from judith either it could be somebody who hacked into the account either way it's hilarious i mean if it's a fake like hooray this is an awesome story just to laugh about and i mean i'm sure cook source like <laughs> like the judith said and now they're more well known than before so we can all hate on them i'm sure that you know they'll just go back to plagiarizing like normal until someone sues them so. boing 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 had a great post where they're showing all the people who have, who have reacted to the reaction 
by saying, you know, like, look, okay, this is a bad thing, but, you know, it's not the worst thing that ever happened in the world. And people on Twitter are starting to say things like, Cook's source started World War II. Cook's source is responsible <laughs> for Windows Vista. <laughs> Cook's source causes global warming. Nice. Um, so, you know, got a convenient scope gate. Why not use it? Scope gate? Yep. Scapegoat. That's what happens when scopes. <laughs> scope have, gate. Uh, that drama. is whole different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whole different uh, event. Does scope fix your breath? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it does. Uh, okay. You remember so. scope gate back in <laughs> 1988? Makes your breath you know? really <laughs> fresh. Or scope does gate. it? <laughs> Should we move on to the yes, calendar let's. before we get too weird? Apple's going to retire Xserve as of January 31st, folks. Oh. Get out your goodbye cakes. AT&T U-verse <laughs> customers can use the Xbox 360 as a set-top box starting Sunday, November 7th. Good times. Monday, November 8th, Samsung is going to unveil a new Android device, something That's they've never done before. <laughs> it's the continuum. I bet it's the continuum. The Do you continuum? think it's the continuum? I don't know. You seem to think so, so I'll right. just go with that. <laughs> sure. Or the scope yes. gate. Uh, happy news for gingerbread fans because it's coming November 11th. Delicious. Mm, Delicious yum. Android update. Yum, yum, yum. Don't eat the head first. Uh, Windows 1 7 copy. It doesn't have a head. <laughs> Do you weird. know. My gumdrop button. You don't have it yet. That's true. <laughs> Windows 1 7 copy and paste will be available as an update in a matter of weeks, says Microsoft, like early 2011. That's weeks. I yeah. guess it's technically weeks. less than two months. A matter of weeks is anything more than a week. It could be 52 weeks. Yeah. We know. And help us pick the best moments of Twit and TNT. Yeah, we're starting mm -hmm. to plan for, in a mere matter of weeks, it'll be holidays. That's oh. right. <laughs> so we're starting to plan for our best of shows. Uh, and if you go to twit.tv slash best of, you can uh, pop in your favorite moments from any show on Twit. Uh, we have five in the, in the show name uh, thing, but if you if you've got others, you can you can fill those in as well. Uh, if for tech news today, of course, you choose tech news today. Tell us the episode number and the time code uh, of the actual clip from the episode. So any of our episodes going back to June first, uh, there is also uh, a form in there for MacBreak Weekly, This Week in Google, Windows Weekly, and Twit This Week in Tech. Nothing for iPad today. We we'll get we'll get that in there. We can add that. In there. What no, ev's? That's not a problem. There's nothing but funny clips in there. The less is, that's yeah. true. You just put the entire run. Now, I know, that's true. It is. It's all back to back. Not really funny at all. Yeah. Uh, now, can people add in clips between shows? So yeah, well, may, let's say it's not on TNT proper, yeah. but it was something funny that we said 10 minutes before the if show started. If you found the Justin TV link to the between show stuff, mm -hmm. you could choose Tech News Today, put the time code from Justin TV in there, and then in the explanation field say, this is from this Justin TV and put in the link. Yeah, obviously, because this is for actual episodes, it needs to have been recorded somewhere. So it can't be like, oh, yeah, I remember this one time yeah. in pre-show, and yeah. then it doesn't actually exist if you don't in have recorded time form. Code, that doesn't really do us right. much good. Just try not to get uh, too mad when we don't find the clip you're talking about. If it was that day that Tom wore that shirt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was a good day. Be as specific as possible. But man, I love this form. I wish I had this and seen that. This has made my job a lot easier. No, this is just Google Docs. We could have totally Google Docs. I know, <laughs> totally. Kind of did something similar to this with the gadget. Thank you, Ken Shepardson. Yes, Ken, thank you so much, Ken. On to the emails. TNT says Todd from Davis. Regarding the light peak versus USB 3.0 discussion you had in episode 111, one argument for Intel and Apple not supporting 3.0 is to avoid disgruntled customers who invest in USB 3.0 hardware only to see it abandoned 12 to 24 months later in favor of the next new thing. If light peak is the future with lots of headroom for performance growth, maybe it's good to wait just a little bit for that. Is USB 3.0 equal HD DVD? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Hmm, that's an interesting parallel. Oh, whoops. <laughs> that's not the right I, one. That, no, no. I, I was. <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, Get it? DVD. Wrong <laughs> <laughs> button. See that's what I did there? That's an interesting parallel. <laughs> uh, because HD DVD was a successor to DVD, it was backwards compatible. You could play your DVDs in your HD DVD player. USB 3.0 would be the same thing. Um, well, Randall, you had a good explanation when we were talking about this pre-show, though. Yeah, I mean, for Apple, Apple doesn't really care, I don't think. I think they're just friends with Intel. Intel is notorious for being a uh, control freak of technology. For instance, WiMAX is an Intel-backed technology that's been heavily pushed. Even though LTE seems like there's a lot more industry support, 
Intel still thinks WiMAX is going to make a go for it. So I think USB 3 and Lightpeak has a lot more to do with that. Now, USB 3 is weird because, you know, even though it's it's out, I don't think there are too many computers that have it. There aren't even too many expansion cards. Believe me, I've looked. Um, so I think, I don't think this is really a technology that's launched. If Lightpeak gets its act together relatively soon, I think Lightpeak might be okay still. I think Apple is definitely going to go with Lightpeak just from the public posturing they've had. It really sounds like they're not going to mess around with USB 3 too much, and uh, they'll give Intel the benefit of the doubt again. Well, Intel says that the whole reason this guy wrote in is Intel said they're shipping Lightpeak uh, first half of next year. Uh, yeah. So it looks yeah. like Intel is going to be shipping Lightpeak yeah. before they ship USB 3.0. Yeah, I mean, Intel just likes to own the technology. They like to license it. They like to, you know, they think they know better than everyone else how to do technology. And they have a good track record, so I don't fault them for wanting to have control. However, I mean, everyone wants the future to be today, not in half a year. Yeah. So. Well, and Intel will says they will support USB 3.0. It's a, there's a wide scope of different technologies that exactly. they, they want to uh, support. So there's sort of, you know, if they're hiding one, there could be a wide scope gate. That we need to investigate. <laughs> yes. Rob White writes into TNT at twit.tv, says, Hey, TNTers, as a solution for the problem of EMF blocking in a plane's cargo hold without adding a lot of weight, I have one word for you. Flectron. <laughs> Which is, that's, a, that's a camel case word. I don't know if it, it counts. Is. I, I don't know. Uh, it's a woven nickel copper fabric that can provide a near total EMF block. It works so well that the NSA orders large amounts for its own uses, whatever that may be. Dun, 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 dun. Talk about a scope gate. It still might be expensive to implement, but it wouldn't add a lot of weight. That's a cool idea, Rob. Thanks for that. Uh, somebody else sent along a similar idea. So thanks, everybody, who sent those in. Finally, Vic, the Texas rancher pilot, writes in and says, Hello, everyone. Or, well, specifically Becky, Sarah, Jason, Tom, whoever else happens to be hanging around. I assume that's you I up in the wall. out there. Me? Burke's out there. Randall. Uh, this is my second grader son. Came home from school pretty psyched yesterday. He has made many friends with some fifth graders and has now declared them his 5G network, standing for 5th grade network. That's great. Aw, uh, yeah. He said, I hold that his use of 5G is at least as valid as T-Mobile's use of 4G. My son's network is probably faster, however. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, snap. He's going to dub This Week in Tech as his 4G network for geek. Aw. Oh, Aw. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Sure. 5G network. I like the 5G <laughs> network. I like, I like that. And the 6G and the 7G. Yeah. Goes Thanks, Vic. 12, 12 Appreciate G. that. And thank you, Randall, uh, for uh, hanging around to be on the show. It's great to have you. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I was love to come by the cottage, even if it's through Skype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to have you. Let folks know uh, where they can find you on the Internet and what you're up to. So I'm at Randall B on Twitter. Right now I'm working at a video platform company called Castfire. They are awesome. You should check them out. Also, I'm working on some secret projects, um, basically the evolution of how online video works and that's at vidplus.com so lots of stuff cooking up in my uh side project porridge i guess i don't know <laughs> i don't know where that goes porridge, mm, mm. porridge. Mm. this porridge is too cool <laughs> i mean for school <laughs> all right all right before we leave uh this just in from the chat room wall street journal reporting that hp x contractor uh alleged in june that mark heard the company's chief executive leaked to her details of the company's plan to acquire electronic data systems insider trading snap so the whole hp ceo drama just gets thicker and thicker this is oh, uh, Jody. Hurt. This is Jody Fisher. A puff thicker and a puff thicker. Yeah, look her up on IMDb, Jody Fisher. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, that's it. Have a great weekend. <laughs> twit.tv slash TNT is where you can find us on the web. You can email us TNT at twit.tv or give us a call 260 TNT show. We'll see you on Monday. Okay.